Hello, I'm Perrin Beatty, and I'm pleased to be here with Margaret Stewart, who's the country manager for Salesforce. Salesforce has been an incredible partner to the Canadian Chamber. Last year, Salesforce and the Canadian Chamber partnered to provide $10,000 grants to small business owners across the country to help them build their, their resilience. And almost a year later, I'm pleased to come together with, with Margaret again to be able to talk about building business resilience through an inclusive recovery. So Margaret, several months ago, we talked about the state of small business in Canada through the pandemic and how innovation and agility are critical to supporting their resilience through times of disruption. A year later, what are you seeing from Canada's small businesses, so many of which have been started and, and run by women? Thanks, Karen. So good to see you and, and to almost be back with you one year later, um, almost in person, that is. So it, it really has been a challenging year, and we've seen so many small businesses adapt and pivot to a digital first work from anywhere world. And you know, if last year was the year of the pivot, this year we're really seeing that it's the year of accelerating digital transformation. And, and so many businesses have, have realized that what worked before for them no longer applies. And so many of the wonderful business partners that you have and that we have, have adapted a business, a beginner's mindset so that they're rethinking how they're going to market and how they're doing business. And you know, Salesforce every year conducts what we call a connected customer survey. And what we've learned from consumers and from business buyers during that, with that survey this year is that 88% of customers expect businesses to accelerate digital transformation due to COVID. And 68%, they've elevated their expectations of the digital delivery they expect from businesses. So the companies that are leading and they're leading with their values so that they serve their customers, their employees, their partners and their community at large, they're the businesses that are thriving as we go forward, Perrin. In, in your sense, these changes are permanent. They're not short-term as a result of COVID and the restrictions on us, but that how we do business in Canada is changing permanently. Oh, absolutely. People are building back better. Um, and that beginner's mindset is leading to so many advances as folks build back better and build back different and have that beginner's mindset as to how the expectations have changed and now how they're delivering differently as part of it. You, you were talking about the role of values. Uh, 2020 also brought difficult conversations to the surface that we as a society and we as business people had to address head on, but just hadn't up until then. Values are now a boardroom imperative, which may not have been the case a few years ago. How has the discussion about values affected how we do business today? You're so correct. Values now are a boardroom conversation and increasingly a boardroom imperative. And the boardroom is also saying, how do we take that talk and how do we translate it into action? And, and at Salesforce, our values, our core values have always been trust, customer success, innovation, and equality for every human being. And they have really, really set the, the bar for how we have gone to market and how we have interacted with our customers throughout the year. And, and, and let me give you one example, Perrin. If I think about Salesforce for All, which started as a, a volunteer-led Salesforce employee initiative to deliver digital skill sets so that new Canadians would find meaningful work across the country. We've now taken that Salesforce for All program and we're bringing it to underserved communities across Canada so that they can find meaningful work, so that they can become part of this digital age and really become a part of this resilience and regeneration of Canadian business. And, and what, all, what all businesses are doing is tr transforming so that they have an equal and equitable workplace. One where everyone is heard, everyone feels seen, and everyone feels that they are empowered to succeed. And we as businesses absolutely have a responsibility to listen, to amplify those diverse voices, 
And what we then see happening is huge amounts of innovation, a lot more employee engagement, and a lot more collaboration and businesses that reflect the communities in which we all live. Margaret, I want to pick up on that point. One of the most disturbing elements of the pandemic is how uneven the impacts have been within society. It's had the effect of undoing much of the progress that we've been steadily making and improving equity and inclusiveness and increasing opportunities for all Canadians. What's often referred to as a she session has been at the forefront of values-based leadership conversations over the course of the past year. We know that women have been disproportionately affected and that business has have a role to play in creating positive change. How can leaders act now to mitigate the damage that's been done and course correct toward a more inclusive future for women? This, this is such an important conversation because as you said, Perrin, the, the cost to women in the last year has been really, really deep. We saw half a million Canadian women lose their jobs, and we've seen women's participation in the Canadian, Canadian workforce be at its lowest amount in 30 years. But what we've learned through the pandemic is that work can be different, and we can achieve success from anywhere. And it's our responsibility as companies to empower all to get the job done from anywhere whenever we can offer flexible work, work options. And so we've got to move forward with agility, creativity, and that beginner's mindset that we talked about before so that we support women as the economy reopens. And so it's never been more important than to be in, in values, values first leader so that we keep pace with the change. We know how people are learning and working differently. And above all, we're reducing barriers so that all have equal opportunities for success. So we're really talking about moving away from a, from a two-dimensional bottom line where it's red ink or black ink to something that's three-dimensional and where we measure the responsibilities and role of businesses in a wide variety of ways, including what sort of opportunity is provided and, and uh, whether or not it creates a society that's more open and where everybody shares the benefit. That's a very different conception of the role of business from what we've known in the past. It is. It, it's values-based leadership. And so the boardroom is defining those values and they do need to be inclusive and they do need to be very refre reflective of the communities in which we live so that we are reducing the barriers to entry. And it's causing so many businesses, I think in a beautiful way, and it's a very unique moment to rethink how they do business and how they go to market. And, and we all have a choice right now, Perrin. We can follow the same or we can build back better and we can rewrite the playbook on how we operate. And, you know, and there's so many wonderful examples. And if I think about Skip the Dishes and what they've been doing in the last year, we saw over 30% of restaurants across the country closing their doors. And but Skip the Dishes worked with so many of those restaurants so that they could stay open and they could thrive. And they could also connect 30,000 restaurants to all us hungry customers. But not only did their business increase, but Skip the Dishes also gave back 71 million in commission rebates. And they also donated a million dollars to food banks. So it's this inclusive leadership and values-based leadership that we are seeing be so much more important. And we, we at Salesforce believe that business is the greatest platform for change and that all businesses have an opportunity and a responsibility to be a catalyst for change. And so Karen, my hope is that as we take on these issues, we take them on loudly and we're not, we're very loud voices so that we're doing the right thing and that we're gonna look back and see this as a very meaningful moment in Canada's history. Margaret, a final question. Uh, you've made it clear that, that there is no turning back, that the changes that we've been seeing are, are permanent. And you've also made it clear that, that we need to have values front and center. As a business person, when you, when you look at this, uh, how do business models have to change? And what should business leaders keep in mind as they're planning for the year ahead? 
they need to keep in mind businesses today really need to think deeply about their values and then put those values front and center and live those values and live it for leaders it's their personal values and for companies it's their company values and so you know for salesforce it's trust it's customer success it's innovation and it's equality for every human being but i invite all businesses to think deeply about what their values are and then take positive action to truly deliver and live those values that's what's going to lead us all to look back and really really celebrate this moment in history. Margaret, that's a very important message. And thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Perrin.